The two modes of abolition are assistance and agitation. Assistance, otherwise known as love, is helping the helpless, caring for the abandoned and fatherless, practicing true religion, showing compassion for those caught up in the culture of death, helping to restore those who have committed the sin of abortion to find forgiveness, healing, and redemption in Christ. Abolitionists must not simply stand up and speak out against the injustices we seek to abolish. We must also give our lives to helping those caught up in the culture that contains those injustices. This means opening up our homes to the fatherless and our hearts to the forsaken through adoption and foster care. This means assisting women with financial, emotional, physical, and spiritual counseling and care. This means doing to others as we would have them do to us. Our primary aim is not to shut down grimy abortion centers through protest. While we actively seek to rescue children being carried into these centers by the thousands, we do not consider clinic ministry to be the front lines of the battle against the evil of our age. It goes further than that. As abolitionists, we have asked ourselves, what does Christianity look like in a culture that kills its children? Our defining purpose is to put the answer to this question into action in our daily lives. In short, we are just Christians who love our Lord and long to be doers of his word and not hearers only. That being said, we long to love the woman who wants to kill her child. We long to tell her the truth, to plead for her to turn away from sin, and then meet her physical needs in order to show her that, no matter what her situation looks like, she must never kill her baby. We, as the church, are called to run fervently to her side and assist her. And then there is agitation, otherwise known as speaking the truth. Agitation is destroying speculations, undermining misinformation, awakening the apathetic, unsettling the indifferent, exposing evils, not just abstaining from them, and demanding justice. Abolitionists make a practice of bringing the darkness of abortion into the light of day. This means putting the horrors of abortion on display before this happy-go-lucky world. This means speaking out about spiritual destruction which abortion causes to men, women, children, the family, and the entire fabric of our modern society. This means exposing the abortion industry as a multi-million dollar business built on the blood of oppressed people. This means exposing the way the abortion issue is used as a political football by lobbyists on both sides of the aisle to ensure their party's power and place of influence. This means pointing out the fact that most churches do little to stand against abortion and that most pastors are terrified to speak out against child sacrifice from the pulpit. This means exhorting lawmakers to fulfill the commission God has given them to do justice. Abolitionists often get criticized for practicing this mode of agitation. The argument against agitation is that we're causing division amongst brothers. I have to stop here and clarify that there are basically two different kinds of people within the pro-life movement. They are those of differing faiths and beliefs. They do not hold to pure biblical doctrines. There are atheist pro-lifers, secular pro-lifers, homosexual pro-lifers, feminist pro-lifers, Catholic pro-lifers. There are also many false converts who call themselves Christians within the movement. And then there are those who are Christians, true believers, who hold to biblical truth. Because our first and foremost objective is to glorify God, true Christians will not endure false doctrine for the sake of a social cause. As Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? In this case, what does it profit anyone to save lives of babies and at the same time to lose their own souls? So with gentleness and respect, we would call you to abandon your idols, to abandon your false doctrine, and to submit and align your life to the Word of God. Secondly, those who are true Christians within the pro-life movement, our encouragement as their brothers and sisters is to call them out of that movement which contains compromise. The scriptures teach that truth divides, and it's a good thing that the truth is being separated from falsehood in the pro-life movement. Some organizations within the pro-life movement use science as their foundation as opposed to the Word of God. They trust in pragmatism instead of trusting in the Lord. They also discriminate against babies who are exceptions. They believe that women are the second victims of abortion, refusing to punish them, showing partiality to the wicked. Abortion will not be abolished until there is repentance in the heart, and there is a stigma put on lawmakers who refuse to criminalize all abortion without exception. I'm reminded of what the Bible tells us about King Ahab and the prophet Elijah. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is it you, you troubler of Israel? And Elijah answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you have in your father's house, because you have abandoned the commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals. That's the problem with lawmakers today. 
They have abandoned the commandments of the Lord and refused to do justice. And they're pushing abolition to the next generation of lawmakers, delaying justice and, in effect, disobeying the Lord. As Joshua said to the people, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In Psalm 82, the Lord says to those who govern the people, How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Pro-life lawmakers all across the country adamantly refuse to file a bill of total and immediate abolition. Instead of honoring them with awards and inviting them to be guest speakers at pro-life banquets, our thinking about these lawmakers who fail to do justice must change. As Matthew Henry said, to do unjustly is bad, but to judge unjustly is much worse, because it is doing wrong under color of right. Against such acts of injustice, there is least fence for the injured, and by them, encouragement is given to the injurious. And that's exactly what's happened thanks to the acceptance of demonic doctrine within the pro-life movement. The true victims of child sacrifice are left exposed and unprotected, and not even recognized as image bearers. And this is why we admonish our brothers, the true believers within the pro-life movement, to join with us in repenting of our former way of thinking, and represent the Lord as He is worthy of being represented. To God be all the glory. We will continue to speak the truth and love in His name.